Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. We've got an old timer we're going to work on today. This one is a Daiwa Millionaire. It's the um, 4HM. This one hasn't seen service in quite some time. It's just very difficult to turn. And well, we're going to see if we can't take care of that. There seems to be a little bit of skip in here, but it's obvious that this hasn't seen lubrication in a very long time. And hopefully this is just dirt and dried grease that's causing this poor performance. So we're going to take this reel apart. We're going to show you how to service this thing. Hopefully we're going to restore the performance of it and give this reel a second chance. Well, I'm going to start by removing the exterior pieces and that starts with the handle and the handle cap that holds this, the nut on that holds the handle on. And while I do that I'm going to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like the art of reel repair, the hobby, if you like to learn about fishing reels and, and how they are made and a little bit of the history of the companies and so on, please uh, subscribe. You're going to learn an awful lot as I try to teach you uh, about those companies, about the reels, and about how to service these yourself. All right, so we took the, uh, the cap off. Now there's a nut. This is a 10 millimeter nut. So we're going to be able to take that off. And I like to, to work with my hands as much as possible. So if you can get that to screw or unscrew, uh, without using the wrench. I, I kind of like that. And then we have a clip, a C-clip here, or an E-clip, that's uh, holding the, the balance on the shaft, so you want to bring that out. And you want to be careful because you don't want to shoot this clamp off into the distance. So just be careful with it. I use the edge of a screwdriver to kind of knock it enough that I can work a pin or something from behind and then kind of walk it out. And you can just about see that clip. So let me remove that just to show you it's there. It's hard to see on this one because it's, well, it's so grease packed. But that is the clip right there. Don't lose it. So how do I not lose it? Well, I put the pieces and parts that I take off into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container. And uh, that kind of assures me that when I go to, to bring it back, I know where it is. Well, there's a little washer behind that clip, so we'll show you that as well. It's right there. And uh, make sure that you put that in the same place as the clip. And one of the ways to know how to reassemble this reel is to take pictures when you remove the pieces and parts from the reel. Well, this reel's got a lot of dirt and, and dried grease and the like. I'm going to start by trying to clean up as many pieces as I can on the way in and out. So I'm going to use a light steel roll. It's a 4-0 based. I'm going to use some metal polish. I'm just going to try and knock off now what appears to be kind of years of grease and grime and dirt and the like. So we'll, we'll do that. This has got um, bars around the handle knobs. So I'm going to go ahead and put a squirt of penetrating oil in there. Then I'll grab a paper towel, wipe down the metal piece, let the oil seep into the uh, posts around that handle, and hopefully when it comes time to reinstall, well, it'll be a nice piece. There's a tension washer next on that gear side that goes between the handle and the star adjuster. And then we have the star adjuster. This is a good place to take a picture as you're coming through kind of wanting to know how the pieces and parts come together. There will be some pieces under this star adjuster. And if you take a picture of those, you'll know how to stack them in. I just put a squirt of oil onto the, the threaded part of the gear sleeve. And that's going to just make the star adjuster come off a little bit easier. And it's also going to help clean out those threads. When I have that off, as long as I have that steel wool here, it doesn't hurt to just brush off that tarnish and most of that tarnish is just the old grease that is kind of bled out of the reel and uh, had no place to go, so it settled on the, uh, the metal pieces there. A lot of what you do in reel repair is simply cleaning, making an assessment, examining all the pieces and parts for wear, and then uh, taking care to get rid of the old greases and oils. And if all of the parts are in good condition, well, putting them back together again. All right, that's the outside of this, and you'll note that we have a stack on that gear sleeve. Sometimes they'll come out, sometimes you're going to have to remove the, 
the side plate to do it. We'll vote to remove the side plate next. But there is a plastic uh, gear sleeve that's the next piece up here. There's three pieces or three screws that are on the main. And if you, uh, if you can service an Abu Garcia ambassador, well, that's nice. The uh, grease fell off of this. There's, uh, there's two little studs that go in the holes here that uh, obviously was hanging on and uh, well, now it's hanging off. You can uh, re-glue those with hot glue if those uh, little side tags are uh, broken off. We'll see what happens there. All right, I'm going to take the three screws out now. So this reel obviously hasn't seen service in a long time and folks ask me a lot of times what is the right interval for service? And my recommendation is that you service it once a year. And I, I emphasize you. Again, I try to teach folks to do it themselves. Uh, but it is always a good practice to clean up, lubricate the reels, take care of any problem failures or worn drags or pieces or parts like that uh, once a year. That way you know that when it's time to take the reel out, well, you're not going to have a problem because the reel is... Uh, performing poorly. We just took the two bridge screws out and we should be able to lift up the plate and as I suspected there's just a tremendous amount of dirt inside of here. Now I'm going to use the word dirt liberally. I don't know if that's dry greases or what it is. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to use the penetrating oil as a, de as a degreaser. And just let it sit for a moment and we'll come over and tell you to take a picture here because that's the next thing. You're going to have a lot of moving pieces and parts in here and what you want to do is you want to make sure that you know the orientation of those parts so that if you go to take them apart, do the cleaning and things like that, you know how to put it back together. The first thing I like to remove on these is get these springs off of that yoke assembly because they have a tendency to fly. This is the yoke assembly. It's good to take a picture of this, noting that, uh, well, the springs went on the top. Sometimes I get folks that have worked on the reel and they put the springs underneath, which is not an uncommon setup, but it's not how this one goes. We should be able to pull the yoke out. Well, we gotta pull the main gear out too. So the main gear has the old style uh, finger anti-reverse, and it's riding on this post here. So you wanna walk the both of those pieces out of the assembly. You don't wanna pry one or the other because what will happen is you will separate the sides of that fork and if you separate the sides of the fork it's not going to work properly. That goes back in. Here's where I said to take the picture. We have a plastic gear sleeve next. And then we have a series of thrust or, or spring washers. We have a flat one first and then we have two curved ones. So that's the orientation when you go to reinstall on that main shaft. Now we should be able to remove the bottom washer. That's a flat one as well. So there's actually four. There's two flat washers with the two tension washers in between. That'll enable us to pull the gear shaft out. And we'll note that the gear shaft does have a hard washer on the bottom of it. And it has a little drag washer in here, drag washer two in here and this is your main uh, gear. So what we want to do with this is again there's a lot of tarnish on this and you can't check or fix tarnish. I guess you could polish it and try and make it a little pretty but it doesn't have an effect on the reel other than there's tarnish there. We do have some residual break off from the bottom drag washer so I'm going to put a little bit of that penetrating oil in here. I'll use a cotton swab next. Just kind of mop that up. And again, I'm interested more in getting the grease off of it than I am in making that gear pretty. And then let's turn our attention to the actual teeth in that gear. So check all of the teeth. Make sure that they're uniform and not broken. These are in good condition. And if you had sediment jamming up inside the teeth, then these are clean. I, I don't have an evidence of that. Take a hard brush, a toothbrush, a wire brush, a uh, brass brush, anything like that, and just pull through like I'm doing just to make sure that those channels are clear. 
When they are, this can be reinstalled. So we're going to use fishing reel grease first. We're going to get a good amount of that onto the teeth of the gear. You don't need to get it in every slot of the gear, but in, in, a, in a good amount of it, because this one certainly hasn't seen the grease in quite some time. And then I'm just going to put that off to the side for a moment. You want to do the same thing on the gear sleeve. You want to make sure that's nice and clean. Usually you can wipe that off. You saw that I put some spray on here when I was walking that uh, star adjuster off. So just come back and clean that off. You see there's a little bit of dirt there. Otherwise this one is in pretty good condition. And we can take the main gear and we can put that back onto the assembly. Well, we took some washers off. We have three different types of washers. These are all hard washers and they seem to be okay. They're like a leather washer. They're flexible. If they weren't flexible, you would want to replace these. But these are flexible and interestingly enough, that looks about the size of the, uh, the pen spinning reel, the older pen spinning reel, drag washers, the uh, greenies for example. So if you, if you did have one break on you and you needed to replace it, you could probably get away substituting those. First one in then is a hard uh, is the leather washer. Now we have a flat washer that's flat on both sides. Make sure it's clean. That's the next one in. And we're going to do the same thing two more times with these leather washers. So why am I putting grease on a leather washer? Well, a leather washer is permeable and it will absorb the grease. And when it absorbs the grease, that gives it the flexibility so that it doesn't dry out and become a problem. Next one in then is what's called the eared washer. It has a circle in the center and it has two prongs. And these are bent at kind of a 45. The 45 bend faces down as you put it into the slot of that gear. And we have one more to go here. So we'll do the same. Wipe off any excess. You don't need a lot of sloppy greases on that drag washer. It's not going to help it from a drag performance standpoint. It's just there to help it not tear. Well, we mentioned we had those two flat washers that was one top, one bottom, and we had the two tension washers in the middle. So I'm just going to restore that drag stack right now by putting those back in. And again, just walk them up and down. And then we had that plastic sleeve. And this is the one that the star adjuster is going to push down on to give you your, your drag pressure. So that's the way that the sleeve came off. On the back here we have two studs. Those are the trips for the uh, free spool release. And we'll show you those next. Well, we have the plate now. I think we can probably pull the plate off. I'm going to pull the, the yoke and the pinion gear off while I'm at it here. And then this plate should come off. And it's kind of odd that it's uh, kind of stuck like this. I'm just going to try and find a wedge like the uh, knife that I have here. That should help break it off. There you go. And we have the spool behind it. And I really find this interesting that it's so badly rusted here. Right now we're not getting the spool off. So I'm going to just divert my attention for a moment from the side plate that we're working on to the other side plate. Because I believe when I take this other side plate out, the spool is probably going to be jammed or frozen into the side plate burring. And this is a problem because the screws are also pretty much there. When you go to work these screws, make sure that you use the screwdriver that's appropriate to the slot on the screws. Well, there was a lot of folks when I previewed these that wanted to see this, so here you are. This is quite a project. This is not normal for what you would normally see in these reels. Take the three screws out, make sure that they're all the same. 
These are salt encrusted, so I'm going to spray them with some penetrating oil and use that as a kind of something to get the piece off. No surprise here. I want to get the side plate off. This one, like the other one, was stuck. And I'm not quite so sure why this is, is what it is, but it's it's tight. So we're just going to use some penetrating oil here to break this up for a moment. Let that sit. Also, we were, we were pretty lousy on this worm gear, so we'll go ahead and do that. Get a little bit back here. I'm going to put that where I can stand it upright and that uh, can work into the place. I have a vise. I'm just separating the teeth on the vise. And uh, we'll come back to that as well. So this one is uh, this one's a project. A lot of the ones that I get in, well, it's you know, kind of check the oil, fill the gas. In this place, it's uh, give them the car wash and... Uh, full tune-up where we're at it as well, that's okay, but I would much prefer that uh, as you're working on your own wheels, that you take some pride in them and that you go ahead and make sure that the, uh, the wheels are serviced more frequently than this one. I'm going to take the three screws that belong to that side plate, I'll put that right on the top of my, my table there. I have the yoke book, I'll wipe that off, that's plastic, so that should just wipe right off. When you do the yoke, you're going to notice on the back here that you have a 45 degree or so ramp. And that's important to know that that faces towards the spool side of the reel and not the handle side when you go to reinstall. Same thing with the pinion gear. We'll, we'll deal with that next. I want to get the grease out of the way. I've been using Pen Precision Reel Grease for those of you that are wondering what the fishing reel grease is that I use. And I use an artist brush because, well, it doesn't lose the hairs when it's uh, being used. Find the ramp side. That's where the slot side of the pinion gear goes. And then you can do the same thing we did with the main gear. Get that nice and greased. That's going to go into the parts tray as well. Well, this is something interesting. This is very much the look of an Abu Garcia reel. Uh, the earlier stages of that. Uh, had a similar design with the double hook firing. And the first thing I'm going to do is just kind of get that penetrating oil in there and get what I can off of the side plate. Now what I do in an orderly fashion, I want to take one spring off at a time so that I can go ahead and do the adjustments on this. Take your picture here. Very important. It's very easy to confuse the pieces and parts and if you do, well, you're going to be asking me if I do real in the bag projects on these. All right. I'm going to use a small pliers. Grab the one side of the spring. Hold the other side of the spring so it doesn't shoot. And uh, walk that off. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the top. Now there's a side where it sits on the post and there's a side where it sits on a on a clip with a groove in it. I generally try to take it off the side where the clip with the groove is. In this case, I think it's going to be easier to take this one off the post. And just be patient as you work these. All right, that should eliminate all of the pieces and it should enable me to remove them. So first spring comes off this side And be careful as you work these springs, because if you lose them, well, you're going to have a hard time finding them on through to the edge of the reel. Take the second spring off the other post. Those go right into my parts tray so that I don't risk knocking them around. And then I think I can lift this whole assembly up here. Well, I have a, a C-clip under that assembly there. So we're going to need to... Remove that C-clip next. I'm going to remove the spring so I don't shoot that. So that's the third spring. It's a little bit bigger than the other two, which will help you keep it in track. All right, now we need to remove that C-clip. 
Again, not an easy task. It's almost like the one from the, the handle. Okay then, so we've worked a while. It's safely in my bag. So let's go ahead and remove the jack. Again, we want to clean all of this. If there's anything that's going on in this reel, it's that it's just dry grease and dirt. It's a shame that it's got this way, but now that it's here, let's take care of business. Note the ups and the downsides. Clean it as best you can. Wipe off the dirts. And we'll just kind of put that off on the side once it's cleaned. If you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, or how to service a reel, leave it in my comment section. I will try to answer that for you. All right, we have a left and a right side here. I'm hopeful that this will all just come off. Now that's pinned on there, and I'm not going to change that pin. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to flood this again. I'm going to work around that with the uh, cotton swab to do exactly what we were doing with the other piece. With that clip reinstalled, we want to grab the springs and make sure we put those back together again. And I like to, again, put one on the post first, hold that in, and then grab the pliers to set the second one. Just be patient, it'll come to you. There we go, that's the tough one. And we have the two side plate springs. One goes over the top of the post. We do the same thing with this one. I like these micro pliers because you can really get a good bite, if you will, with them and be able to work around them. And then we're going to do this side. Again, one over the top of it. And again, if you had questions as to where these springs went, you'd go back to your pictures and take that look. All right, those are there. We should be able to push down, see them set, and then. Once they get kicked up, it'll push it back up. There you go. All we need is oil now. And these are all metal parts, so make sure you oil all of that. I notice we have bushings, not burrings in this reel. So there's really no burring service going on there. And I do notice I have just a little bit of dirt left over there. All right, let's go reinstall the main gear then. We've already greased that. I think next up we probably would want to set the carrier in place. Look for the, the two slots they face in. So let's go ahead and put that carrier on and face the slot in the pinion gear forward. Just like that. All right. Now we can go ahead and get the anti-reverse dog next. Those forks belong splitting this black ratchet here. You can see how the dog will set in there to hold this when it's uh, operating properly. A little bit of grease onto the gear shaft. I want to set that again. It kind of is a little bit loose. If it's loose, you can pinch this just to tighten it up enough. Again, those little you don't need to have them touching. It's a friction driven piece and it doesn't need a lot of friction to, uh, to close. Center that on your post. Aim the hole in your anti-reverse dog for the post that holds that. Push them both down evenly and make sure you mesh into the pinion gear. You got a lot going on there, but uh, I, think we're, I think we're there. We're there. You can give it a test at this point. This uh, anti-reverse dog needs to be inside that case stud. Once it is, give it a spin, make sure that it's working well, and then back it to make sure that the anti-reverse is closing. And you can see it closing here. 
All right, everything is set properly there. We can go ahead and take that case, wipe out whatever's left here of that dirt. We did a pretty good job cleaning that up. And again, you've got a plastic bushing on the inside of this one as well. There are no bearings that I can see there. Just need that uh, cotton swab. Just to clean up a little bit more of that. All right, and what we can do now is grab a little bit of rod and reel cleaner and a kitchen scrubby. This is kind of a cleaner and a wax. Let's go inside the case here and wipe off what we can on the case. It's the best time to do this because, well, you're just not going to uh, have the opportunity with the star adjuster and the handle and all that other stuff on there. So do, do the best you can there. Okay, on the plastic bushing, before we do anything else, let's go ahead, grab the grease brush and just put a little bit of grease where that spool uh, tab is going to finish. Find your centering hole for this, find your two holes for the screw, and you should be able to load that over and nicely. Oops, that was an oops. That's one of the values of this parts tray. You can go look inside and you can see, what many of you already knew, that I didn't have the springs on those posts. All right, now we do. So come on over to the top, settle it up. Then you want to make sure that your alignment is good and your case is square. If you find that you're having an issue with anything, stop. I noticed that I was not coming in square on those springs and that's why it didn't seat properly here. There we go. Screws are also getting in the way. So just take your time. You want to make sure that... There we go. All right, now we got it. Patience. It will win the day. Couldn't imagine what was holding it back there, but it was there's three holes in this side plate that those screws go through. And well, they just uh, weren't going through those holes. Easy enough to fix. All right, those two screws go on. The star adjuster goes on next. There's, there's still a little dirt coming off that uh, assembly, so let's just buff that as best we can. Once you get that in enough, go ahead and take your handle, use that as a wrench to kind of hold this shaft in place as you tighten it down the rest of the way. All right, we're, we're tightened there. Bring that back up because you have a little spacer and you have your handle. And then you want to go for that little washer and clip that's holding this piece on. Washer first. Clip second. These are, these are pretty small pieces here. You gotta be careful. Again, these things will shoot. So just be careful as you're working with them. Make sure that it's tucked all the way on before you uh, release your hold on it. Now our handle nut goes back on. It's a 10 millimeter nut, tighten it down. And then align it so that your cap centers over the hole for your cap screw. 
And this will be the last piece of the side plate other than tightening it to the frame. At this point you can give it a spin, see how it does, and boy it's certainly turning a whole lot easier than it was. Push the spool release. There we go. Make sure that it goes in, comes out, goes in, comes out. So we have our spool release. Let's go back over here. This thing's been sitting on the side for a while and uh, we squirted it in here so we can free the spool from that bushing and uh, well there you go, it just fell out. So the carrier on this one was uh, stuck in the bushing. Kind of saw that. There are no bearings in this that I can tell of. Now this belongs to Scott and I trust Scott is going to replace this line before he takes it fishing. But that's Scott's job to do. I'm going to grab a rubber band and hold that line into place. Judging on the age of the uh, last service, I'm going to guess that's probably the last time this line was changed. I could be wrong, surprise me, but uh, that's uh, something that should be changed on an annual basis. Monofilament is inexpensive and it should be changed. I'm noticing we're missing a break on this one. I want to, I want to do two things here. That bushing got stuck in a case, so I'm trying to get some grease onto the bushing itself. And I want to put a drop of oil on that bushing where the shaft is going to be. And again, normally you would have a bearing on this side, and if you had the bearing on that side, you certainly want to oil that bearing, but there's nothing there. And then I'm going to take that thing again, I'm going to just put some grease into the inside of this case. We can see on the external part of this case, well, we get that same dirt, don't we? So we're going to mop that up. I've had that penetrating oil sitting there and soaking on it, and it does a good job of cleaning it up. Next up, I want to take the internal case here that also cleaned up nicely. And this is a plastic gear that's going to be driving the... Um, Line guide, it's rolling fine and it's plastic and I do not um, grease or oil the plastic gears. They're petroleum based products, I leave them alone. Well, next up then is the alignment of these side plate screws. I'm going to need to get some hot glue for that badge again. get the side plate on first. Then we're going to go take care of that line guide. I'm going to reinstall everything and see how we did. So I guess a couple of lessons learned here. One of them is please don't leave the service go as long as it does. It only creates problems and shortens the life of the reel. I can see here the uh, screws got stuck in this side if you remember. And uh, that shouldn't be. You can also see it doesn't take that long to do the service, so an annual request to do the service for you to just set aside an hour or so uh, should be reasonable. And um, if you take care of the reel, the reel will take care of you. All right, we're going to see if we can't move the uh, line guide. Well, to do that, the easiest way would be to put the spool back in. Turn the spool and move it over so that the line guide drives to a corner. Fortunately, I've oiled that spool shaft so well that, well, I can't turn the spool. Okay, now I can grab a screwdriver, open up the cap. That houses the pole. Use my little uh, pliers to pull the pole out. And you want to make sure, and this is a good example, you want to make sure that the shoulders of the pole are clear of dirt. And this one's just loaded. It's hard to see. I know on your camera I can see it here. But you want to make sure a couple of things. One is that the, the shaft of the pole is nice and clean and that the shoulders are clean. 
If it doesn't, then it doesn't track easily. And we saw how this was, was running pretty tough here. Again, we'll just float the penetrating oil on the pieces. I suspect that some of this wear here is dirt, so we'll mop that up as well while we're at it. And we can go reinstall. You want to replace the pole into the assembly. Put the oil on that. Now we're going to grab the side plate and install that before we finish with the pole. To do that, we want to take the uh, grease brush. So I'm having a little trouble locating it. There it is. Put a little bit of grease onto the spool shaft. Let's align the reel with the screw holes. And then let's start those screws by hand again. Make sure we got these set. And then what I want to do is I'm turning the handle. I want to push down on the pole so that it, it locks into place. You just saw it there, and then we can put the pole cap back on. And that's it for the reassembly of the reel. The only thing that kind of remains now, a little bit of grease onto where that's going to ride there. You can grease that top bar as well. And uh, well, let's give it a ride. Well, that's a whole lot different experience than it was when this reel came in. It actually turns nicely. I'll loosen that up a little bit. Make sure that as you press down here that you have your free spool, which we do. And then make sure it restores to the point where you have that anti-reverse and you're driving along with this uh, Now, there's still a little bit of noise in there. I think that's going to wear away over time. That's probably the accumulated dirt and grease and the like. Oh, man, that's just been a couple of turns. Wow, what a difference. Okay, that's it. That's your Daiwa Millionaire. That's how you take it apart and service it. That's how you clean it up and give it a second chance. I, I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, to all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.